Well, hello, everyone. I'm going to give folks just a few minutes before we get started with the unboxing. This is my first live. Oh, my God. But I do see we have a couple people here. I don't expect a lot of people that this is the first one, but hopefully this will grow and be something a little more exciting. Let me make sure my volume's up all the way. Oh, rude. Cool. Can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> Thank you for the validation dive talk. I appreciate that. All right. I think we are going to go ahead and get started um, just because it, this was a last minute decision and um, I wanted to go ahead and get started sharing some live stuff because sometimes that can be super exciting. Um, as some of you know, based on my last video that I am getting ready to go on the CCR journey and start training with Woody of Dive Talk um, for the Kiss Spirit Rebreather. This was not a light decision. Um, very exciting, to be honest. And it is definitely a massive undertaking. When you are deciding to move to the next phase of your dive journey, it is definitely a, a decision I did not take lightly personally. Uh, one of the things that um, excited me the most about it is it's more A, more learning, B, you also have um, more of a challenge. As you know, open circuit suddenly becomes interesting. Hey, it uh, looks like we have another person who's joined. Just saying hi. Um, if you're here, go ahead. Let me know you're here. That's what the chat's for. I can certainly see that you're there. I can answer questions. We can talk. Uh, this is not something that I want to take lightly. So if you're if you have something that you want to ask, I'm certainly here for that. Um, but again, in the dive journey, when you get to open circuit and you feel like you no longer are getting challenged or you're not learning anything new or you decide to go the professional route and it's also getting to be to a place where that's cool, I'm going to do that part, uh, but I also want something else that's going to challenge me. Uh, I decided that's when I decided that moving towards the technical route would be the next level in my challenge. So today what we're doing is we are unboxing my deep six signature regulators. We're going to take a look at those. We're going to talk about those a little bit. And then I am absolutely here to answer any questions that you have, um, talk to you about Scuba Girls International, what we are, what we do, um, anything that you guys want to talk about, dive related, not dive related. It's Friday, trying to get the weekend started off right. Um, let me just take a look. Give me one second. All right, back over here. Okay, so let's unbox this puppy, shall we? I am terrible with sharp things, so I didn't want to cut myself live. Uh, so I, 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 you know, cut open the box ahead of time just because uh, that would be awfully embarrassing to cut myself on a live. So let's take a look. Now, first of all, Deep Six does not have a lot of color options at this point. Um, however, I am absolutely thrilled to um, accept the colors that I have. If you want a few Deep Six setups, I completely agree. Alexander, hi, glad you're here. Um, is it Deland, Delland 13? Um, I completely agree. So the reason I went personally went with the Deep Six signature set is because your dive talk boys could not stop talking about them. 
Not to mention, they are also a local business here in the state of Georgia, where I also live um, in the Atlanta area. And I am able to, if I decide, you know, give those guys a call and say, hey, I want to come and check out the facility, see what you guys have. Um, I initially, you guys are going to have to forgive me. I am dealing with um, an illness. <laughs> I went to a professional event and ended up contracting COVID. So I am, I am still dealing with that, but I'm home. I am quarantined and nobody can get to me. So there's that. Um, but um, my initial intent when I ordered the signature um, regulators from deep six, after watching Woody and Gus do their thing down at the facility and put things together, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I had reached out to Landon and said, hey, I would absolutely love to come down to the facility. Um, Forsyth is about, um, what, I think 45 minutes outside of downtown Atlanta. And um, I wanted to come and put the regulators together myself. However, that message never made it to Deep Six at the Forsyth facility. In time, they put everything together, packaged up my lovely box and sent it to me. And I got it really quickly. Now, um, let's take a look because this is exciting stuff. Now, again, I am not an orange person at all, but the colors that they have are limited. I went back and forth with some great. Hey, OK, OK. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so um, orange, not my color, but um they have like two options available when it comes to hose colors, right? So um, you get orange, you get black. Currently, that's about it. Um, went back and forth about the MyFlex debate, whether or not that's actually a decent enough material to use for hoses when you're using them for bailout. Now, if I'm caving, probably not the best solution. I'm not there yet in my journey. So I probably would get a good use out of them. Now I would pick purple, but with the braiding that tends to wear down a little bit, it tends to get bumped, knocked out, unbraided, things unfurl. Um, some of the reviews are just not that great uh, for prolonged use. And I would like the material to last as long as possible. So I went ahead and just went with what Deep Six had, what they had available. And, you know, at some point down the road, if my personal favorite colors, um, which are black and purple, if they ever decide to come out with additional colors, then yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and probably swap them out sometime down the line. Um, I also uh, just went ahead and got what they had available. Um, I'm training, right? So it's not a big deal. I, my unit has, multicolors all over it. I think there's green, there's orange, there's black. So I just went with what we had. Um, and we'll take a look at it later. So let's take a look. How exciting. Okay, I'll move this over because there's two things in here. So first off, we have a long hose. This is probably in this particular set. This is probably the looking at the hoses, probably the longer um, low pressure hose. Um, and so we have our first stage and we have all of the lovely pieces and parts that go along with that. If you watch the April video from Dive Talk where Woody is assembling the reg for Josh, who was the winner, yes, it's 84, thanks Alexander. Um, if you watch the video where Woody was assembling the reg for Josh, who was the guy who won, um, yes, exactly, uh, DIR style. Um, he um, went through each and every piece of, between the first stage. You watched Landon literally take the first stage apart, talked about the environmental seals and the environmental caps and um, all of the pieces and parts that go through the assembly piece. Um, they can tell you all the things about all the pieces, which is absolutely fun and wonderful. So go watch that video it was sometime in April. Um, it has the lovely Deep Six logo. Yep. I opted for the larger SPG because 
I don't see very well. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that selecting the a larger SPG will make it easier for me underwater should I need to pay attention and look at that during a bailout. Um, it does swivel quite nicely. Um, it is the black one. This is the glass top versus the, um, I believe they also had a plastic option or a plexiglass option. Um, but I went with glass because that's what they had available. Um, sometimes beggars can't be choosers. You just got to go with what you got, right? Um, so then we have the large, the 84 inch orange hose and then um, the regulator. Now, one of the cool things that I've read about the deep six regulators is that not just the dive talk people. Hey, Heidi. Hi. I'm so glad you can make it. Um, so one of the cool things that I read about the regulators and not just from the dive talk guys, but doing my own additional research and understanding what other people think. Um, Woody has been a mentor of mine for a long time. Um, Gus and I started diving around the same time. Um, I started diving in 2016 more seriously in 2018. Um, but both of their opinions are very valuable to me because they have been diving either equally or long, far longer than I have. Um, but their opinions are great, but I also wanted to do my own research and it's things like scuba board and, um, some of the other Facebook groups. Lots of people have lots of opinions. Um, you're having gear envy. Darling, we talked about that, didn't we? We talked about that. We're going to take care of you. We're going to figure out what you need and we're going to get you taken care of. Um, so um, in my own research, one of the coolest things that I saw was that just about anyone and everyone who had an opinion about the deep six regulators have said that they breathe the absolute easiest out of any reg that they've ever had the privilege to use. And it's not just um, the people that I know. These are people that I've never seen, never heard of, know nothing about. It's not like, you know, your cave diving legends like um, Mike Young or Ed Sorensen are talking about them. These are just your everyday average divers who are out there using the deep six regs, which I thought was super cool. Um, so I'm quite excited to get them into uh, my setup and in my kit and and use them myself and experience it myself and be able to give you my own personal opinion. Um, in my personal kit uh, for open circuit, I do have an Aqualung Elite. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. I know people have an opinion about that. Um, but when you when you don't know any better, um, you rely on the opinions of others, including your local dive shop. And that's what they sold me. And when they said this is probably one of the top regulators, easy to breathe, balanced, you know, you listen to all the things that they say and you just you buy what they recommend. So that's what I did. Um, so the other pieces that are in here. I have not opened everything, so there's also all sorts of packaging. Plus, in getting ready for this certification trip, I have to tell you that I have spent a lot of money. I have spent a lot of money on the little things, trying to get ready for all of the little things that you don't think about, right? You know, you're like, oh, yeah, I got to buy the rebreather. That's expensive. But clips, bungee. You probably need an upgraded um, surface marker buoy. Um, you know, little things that add up and you're just like not thinking about those and, and all of these things. You've got to be committed if you're moving down the technical route. It is a big deal. Mike's Big Adventures, what? You've got to be kidding me. Hey, sir. Some gear is regional too. I have an Atomic M1 for almost all my regs. And when I go to Florida, people I know uh, where I am from, Monterey divers love the Atomic and the M1 can be used with O2, okay, greater than 40%. Well, all righty then. Um, that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I am glad that you are here, sir. Thanks for, for joining today. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Spare parts. Gotta love spare parts. O-rings, um, spare mouthpiece. Um, I want to be gingerly with that. I don't know what all these little pieces are. That looks like um, just other pieces for the regs. Now we did hear, we did hear Woody say 
that um, the regulator is very simple and has very few pieces to it. So um, I am assuming that um, that's what all these are, replacement parts. And they talk about you being able to um, either manage your own regulator maintenance because it's that simple or, you know, them being a part of helping you manage your own regulator maintenance, which I also think is cool. And because I have two in there, there's replacement parts. So there's pieces for everything for your own save dive kit, which everyone should have. If you are not serious in your journey yet for diving either open, in open circuit, if you are just getting started, the save dive kit comes in handy. Um, build one. If you get serious about diving and you're diving more than once a year, that save a dive kit will save your dive or somebody else's dive. I can't tell you how many times that I've been at a quarry just because I need a bubble therapy and somebody blew an O-ring, pulled out my stuff, replaced it. They can still dive. Yay. Um, so we've got some low pressure plugs, maybe um, more reg replacement parts. Lots of little pieces. We'll let the smarter stuff, uh, the smarter people tell me what those things are when I meet with Woody and we go over all of my stuff. Um, and then we just have the second reg, the shorter hose, and still the, the larger face SPG, just because I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm 45, getting older. My eyes are not the greatest. Yes, I am probably in the process of investigating what Lasix will do to me um, just because I have complicated vision. But I am so stoked about this. You have no idea. Um, I love it when um, a good product comes together. Someone's recommended it. I go do my research and it sounds like the hands down, that's the the review, right? Everybody loves it. So um, I'm excited to use it. Um, Heidi said, I'll definitely want your help with making a save dive kit. Um, that's absolutely not a problem, Heidi. We will work on that together when you and I meet at Blue Water Park in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll talk through that completely. I'll show you mine. I'll, I'll show you mine. Um, and you and I can talk through um, what it'll take to build your own safe dive kit. Um, yay, right? Um, let's see what else I got, because I got a lot. Um, rope, again, this does not look purple. It almost looks periwinkle or blue, um, but I per black and purple are my colors. Black is my primary favorite color, but everybody is black. So I tend to go with purple. Purple is also, for those who are not... Um, it does look like we have a lot of experienced divers, but uh, for those who don't know, um, purple is the last color to, if you order a regulator or fins or anything from Deep Six, don't forget to use the Dive Talk code when you check out for 10% off. That's absolutely right. Thank you, Dive Talk, for dropping that in there. Um, so I went with purple just because that's my second favorite color, the last color to, the last color not absence of color, which is what black is, or the presence of all color, which is what white is. Um, Alexander Nurse says, he used it, it was great, thank you. I used it, it was great, thank you. I saved at least a hundred bucks. Um, Jeffrey, yes, it is good info and it will save you some cash um, that you'll spend somewhere else. <laughs> Christy, yay, I'm so glad you're here. I didn't know there was a dive talk discount. Where have I been? For real. I mean, they only have it on the face of their YouTube channel. Ma'am. Go. Anyway, rope. It is not hemp, but it is rope and it is purple. So I'm happy about that. Um, I did upgrade my SMB because I figured the one that I used for open circuit does nice things on the surface for open circuit. But when you need to deploy at depth of what if you need to deploy it at 100 feet, probably need something a little more sturdy. Um, so I went ahead and upgraded and also got a longer one. I believe this is six feet or seven feet. Um, just to make sure that I was prepared. Um, it came with a finger spool and a double ender, 
which I am thoroughly pleased about that it's not brass, brass double unders for whatever reason, all the brass double unders that I've ever purchased have some sort of burr on them. And I always cut my thumb or my finger trying to manipulate them. Anybody else have that problem or is it just me? Um, let's see. Christy said, you got me. Jeffrey said, right, Christy. I am so glad you guys are here. Thank you for making my first live special. I will never forget this, that the fact that you guys have showed up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What else have I got? Oh, yeah. I'm so super excited about this. So because when I started um, doing specialties in open circuit and I had no clue, um, I went and bought inexpensive lights for specialties like night and limited viz or um, rec and advanced rec. There's a company out there that's just badass. I went and bought myself. Now you need a long spool. If you shoot that from 100 feet, you will need a spool for at least 100 feet. I figured as much. Um, spools are next. They're on the list. Um, I will have the conversation with my, my mentor to figure out exactly what I need before training. Um, but the D710, I do not have it charged because I've not made it that far, but yeah, the batteries are not in there. I haven't put them in there yet and they're not charged. So, but this little sucker is powerful. I would highly recommend and dive talk. If you go to their YouTube channel, right on the front page, the very first link that they have in their uh, past their merch is their discount for Orca torches. So go save some money there too. Um, but it too comes in pretty pouch. You've got two rechargeable batteries. That's right. F.A. bought two D710s because he's smart, right? With the dive talk discount. Yeah, buddy. Um, your replacement O-rings, there's some lubricant in there for it, your re your charger connection, um, love Orca Torch 710 is super bright. Thank you for, thank Dive Talk for that. Absolutely. Um, cool. So I have my first D710 that I personally purchased myself, um, so I'm excited about that. There's the teeny tiny little spool that's probably like, it might be 50 feet that came with my SMB, you know, it's, it's, it's cute, right? <laughs> it's cute. <clears throat> so dive talk, since you're here, how many lumens is the 710? Um, I think I want, I'm going to say it was a thousand. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look it up. Um, but I can, I can do that. I can go back and look it up now in recreational open circuit. 3,000. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, FA says 1,700 high. Everybody's got an opinion. Go look it up. Somebody go look it up. GTS. We don't have any children here. GTS, if you don't know, is Google that shit. <laughs> so um, in recreational diving, they tell you that when you use reels, uh, you just want them all. I know, F.A., I do too, but that, you know, um, I am not independently financially wealthy, so I have to wait till I get paid. You know, IT pays my bills and my ability to scuba. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, so in recreational diving and, and going into your first specialty with a reel is um, rec, uh, and they tell you that you should soak your reels. Um, and I guess that is to expand the material that is, uh, in the reel. So they, they tell you to go ahead and undo it all the way, soak it, and then rewrap it, um, with higher quality reels. Is that still necessary dive talk team? Since I know that you're out there, is that a practice that you also utilize? I'm curious. Um, but my first finger wheel, I might wreck my open circuit reel. You've never done that. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you at some point who, who told us to do that and, you, and you'll have an opinion. Um, but um, 
my first reel. <laughs> it's a finger reel. It is. It absolutely is. And the reason I call it a finger reel is because they're they're far easier to m manage and hold. Um, the reel that I have that I started with is massive and it's on this big contraption because that's what the dive shop sold me. Um, and when you're learning and you don't know any better and you've not done the research yourself, you do what other people tell you who've been in the, the, the sport or activity longer than you. So that's exactly what I did. Um, let's see what else have we said. I think you should always verify. I completely agree, Jeffrey. F.A. said he, he finger reel because <laughs> it is. I mean, pick one. <laughs> um, K. Beavis and Butthead laugh. Yeah. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Um, Jeffrey said, I would think it would stretch even if you did that. You know, it's, it's very possible. Um, but just curious. Other people's experience. You know what I mean? Um, Alexander says, I got an Apex 60 meter spool and it was not attached to the 45 millimeter one. Okay. Christy. Yes. I need help purchasing a reel. Don't forget dive talk has also said that they will assist with any type of equipment purchase or be a, an equipment concierge. So if you guys have questions, you can certainly go talk to them. I am not affiliate. Well, I am affiliated with a shop. And um, you're certainly more than welcome to give them a call. But they're here in the Atlanta area. And I know a lot of you are nowhere near here. Um, so while you could purchase from them, you also have the option of talking to the Dive Talk guys. Um, I'm going to refer to them a lot. And at some point, um, that may be obviously why. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, what else did I get? Um, these are tank bands. I'm not going to open that. That's just silliness. If you want to look at them, go on Amazon. Um, and these, I have an obsession with things that open and shut or things that make organization easier. Like I'm going to rip it open because if I try to cut it, I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to squeeze. I just know it. Okay, so double enders are one thing, but these are butterfly clips. Look at that. I love them. I love the way they look. I love the way they operate. I love the way they feel when you're opening and closing them because they're so easy. They're awesome. I can't wait to use them. I have a bunch. Um, yay, expensive, but well worth it. Um, I learned a bunch watching the meetup. Also great stories. Dive talk guys are cool and can't wait to get some gear. Um, I had an amazing time at the meetup. Half of you guys are from that and I've made friends for life. Some of you guys are just the most amazing folks that I've ever met. So I'm grateful. I am grateful that I elected to go and, and represent, you know, females in this activity. And you guys can see my, my scuba girls banner behind me that actually said that's the scuba girls of Georgia banner, which is the very first group that I started. Um, there will be a scuba girls international banner at some point. Um, but I have to decide on a couple of things before I do that. Um, what else? Oh, this is my favorite part. Okay. I'm excited because it's purple. I'm cute. <laughs> It too looks periwinkle. Thank you, lighting, but it's purple. It is a very good color of purple, but that's going to be spare bungee for anything that I need attached to my rebreather, which by the way, is at Woody's house waiting for me not to be a um, contagious. I'm not going to use profanity um, waiting for me not to be a, a contagious person. Um, so I can go to his house and, um, put my rebreather together for the first time, which is exciting. Um, training is, if I look at the a calendar, approximately, oh God, this is awful. <coughs> Don't get COVID. Oh. <sighs> 
Terry, send me the watermark logo that is on the video. Let me remove the background. F.A., that would be amazing if you want to do that for me. I'll buy you Starbucks next time you're here. <laughs> I'm assuming you're coming back. You know, I, I can't not assume you're not coming back. Um, Dive Gear Express also sent me a little cleaning cloth for glasses, which, you know, I wear glasses, not that you see them now, but I do wear them. That and I have a sunglass obsession, so that'll come in handy. And it's branded. That's great marketing for them, you know. Um, gosh, my desk is a mess. Um, what else do I have in here? Bungie, Bungie. That's practically all of it. I did recently do the, um, for those of you who do or about to do rescue, um, I decided to take the training course for the React Right. Well, so I'm, I am an SSI diver. I crossed over from Patty a number of years ago. Um, and I decided that after going the professional route that I wanted to be able to teach things like React, Write, and Stress and Rescue, just because they were some of my favorite classes. Um, I recently took the dance, the Dan version of React, Write, because uh, our shop um, here in the Atlanta area um, has decided that they're no longer going to teach the SSI version, but the Dan version, which totally makes sense. It's filled with far more material um, and great techniques and 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 things to think about when performing a, an in water or on near water rescue that um ssi just doesn't cover or go through um so i have all of my instructor materials for that which is cool and i'm a swag person i don't know about y'all but i absolutely love swag um so i buy swag from everybody and anybody that i can because i like it so I bought a Dan dry bag because who doesn't want a dry bag when they're on a boat? I love dry bags. So I have shown you everything that I have in getting ready to prep for training with Woody at the end of the month, which is um, like two and a half weeks away. Oh my God, that's two and a half weeks away. I need to finish all my material. Um, but I am ready to chat. It's the weekend. The weekend is here. What do you guys want to talk about? Let's see. Where have I missed in the in the discussion? I have two weekends of diving in the next three weeks. You have packed a lot of diving, FA. You showed us your calendar. I am envious. Go dive. Um, Alexander, by the way, thinking on being a full cave certified. Me. Are you asking me if I am? Alexander? Wait for the delay. If you're asking me, I will just answer. Yes, you are asking me. So part of the reason that I am moving this direction is to see if that's something that I'm interested in. I personally believe the limited experience that I've had so far in Cave and Cavern um, yes. So I was able to go to Blue Grotto and go all the way down to the bottom before they changed the rules. Um, and you all know, once you get past the portion, I think it's like at Pride Rock or Freedom Rock or whatever they call that rock at Blue Grotto, um, you start moving into technically cave space because there is no overhead light. Um, so I went all the way down to the bottom, saw the mermaid, got giddy. I was excited. It was a beautiful environment. The water was crystal freaking clear. Um, so yeah, that kind of thing excites me. Um, somebody took me diving in Jenny Springs, went to the ballroom. Oh my God, that was amazing. Um, went through the restriction. I mean, mind you, it's like a tiny restriction in, in the word and sense of restrictions, but it was cool. Um, got to hold on to the gate, feel the flow. Holy crap. Um, I would so do it again just for the experience while I'm not certified. Um, I am going to share a little bit about me that some of you know, some of you may not know. Um, I'm one of those people that absolutely loves to break the status quo. Um, I am, let's see, Jeff says, what training are you doing with Woody? Uh, kiss rebreather. So it's, a, I, I elected to grab the spirit, purchased it. Liz and I are doing the class together. Hope 
hopefully somebody else locally here will decide to jump in. Um, I don't know if he'll ever see this video, but I do hope he decides to jump in the class because he would be an amazing addition to hanging out with me and Liz. Um, Liz is technically training with Doug Ebersol. Um, my training is with Woody, uh, but we're doing it together because, uh, you know, we're cool like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just fun. It's going to be fun. Um, I'm not ready for a rebreather, but someday you will know when you're ready. First off, it's a huge commitment. Time, um, financially, it is not an inexpensive sport to or a piece of the activity to get involved in or engaged in. You're looking at about 14000 potentially easily to get started between the class itself, your rebreather, incidental purchases, uh, like everything that you've seen here today, plus your, your bailout bottles you have to purchase. Um, you know, there, it, there's a lot to it. I purchased an additional O2 bottle. So I will have two O2 bottles versus one, um, two bailout tanks, um, you know, all the little things they add up, um, but it'll be worth it. I'm excited. Um, let's see, not to mention I have technically two rebreathers. Oh, well, FA show off. Okay. We love you anyway. Um, so what I was saying, cause I get distracted. I am, I am ADD. <laughs> so, um, I personally am one of those people that does not do well with sitting with status quo. Um, if there is something that is male centric, um, that doesn't have a whole lot of women in it, I will get involved and try to push boundaries and limits and go play in male centered spaces. I work in it forever. That has been a male dominated, um, industry. Yes, it has changed quite a bit since I started. Um, but things like cybersecurity infosec are still very much male dominated. Um, I have not done time in cybersecurity, but I have done time in InfoSec where I was one of two females. Um, and my boss at the time was an incredible black woman, which is even less of a represented group in uh, IT spaces like InfoSec. Um, but um, diving, I mean, that that is still very much a male dominated um, activity. The numbers have increased, especially in the recreational spaces. It's probably 60, 40 now. Um, however, when you move over to the technical space, that number decreases even further. Um, awesome dive divas. Yes. Look at you guys coming up with some names. That's awesome. Um, but those, those are the things that I'm passionate about. And, you know, I, I started out this journey I am still not a small fry by any stretch of the imagination, but I started out this journey as a plus size diver. So that is also a group of people that are underrepresented in the sport or activity of diving. Um, I had a rough journey when I first got started. I had people telling me that I shouldn't be diving. I shouldn't go pro. Um, met with a lot of criticism and I mean, just my confined experience, um, the instructors during my confined portion of my open water program were not kind. Um, I had one gentleman literally just like get so frustrated with me because I could not get the um, kit. You know, you take the kit, you move it in front of you, you do the whole removal underwater and at the surface. When we got underwater, because I was a hundred pounds heavier than I am now, I just could not maintain buoyancy. When I went to take the kid off underwater, I started floating up. My feet were over my head. Um, I was literally crying underwater in my mask because I was so frustrated. Um, so now I'm passionate about teaching anyone who is a plus size diver who is healthy enough to dive. Um, I want to be a part of their scuba journey. I want to be a part of people who deal with anxiety and are signed off by a doctor that they're safe to dive. Um, because diving is therapy. I don't know about y'all, but like bubble therapy is a thing. Now I'm about to change over to the technical space. So I really should rethink that statement, but diving in general is amazing therapy and it is my happy place. Being underwater is definitely my happy place and my passion. 
and I am a proselytizer and, um, you know, I want to, I want to tell everybody about diving. So there's that. <laughs> um, let's see what other comments have I missed? Um, what an awful experience. I'm so happy you stuck with it and you're paving the way. Heidi, I am most passionate about people like yourself who maybe didn't have the greatest instructor or didn't really um, get the attention that they deserved or needed when first starting out their journey. And you and I are going to take a look at that and we're just going to knock it out the park. And it, in no time, you will feel a lot more comfortable and confident in the water. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to say that um, I feel privileged that you want me to help you with that. Um, but yes, I stuck it out. I, I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. What can I say? Um, Woody and Gus say that it's the best if you dive with others and have the same rebreather in terms of supporting each other with spare parts, et cetera. Oh my God. <coughs> yes. I believe that that was a statement that they did make FA. You're diving with people who have the same equipment. And one of the things that I think that has impressed me the most is um, I can't, I have watched so many dive talk videos. I, I believe they have over 200 now. And um, if you go through some of the scary videos, the playlist in the scary videos, they make commentary about how, and I think it was one of the female divers that had gotten into trouble. And I, forgive me, I'm, I'm terrible with names. Um, and it's probably been, um, at least 20, 30 videos ago. Um, but the thing that impressed me the most was when this woman had a problem, the rest of the team that she was diving with swarmed her and the conversation and the comment that I left was that I was impressed with how I mean, I've never seen that in recreational diving. In recreational diving, your professional goes over to try to help somebody or your more experienced divers might go, try to go over and help somebody. But if you're in a larger group of 20, 30 people or not that you would want a group that large, but if you had a group of say 10 divers and someone had an issue, not, not everyone is gonna go help. I've That's just been my experience. Um, so I am thoroughly impressed with the fact that when you move to the technical side, especially the KISS team, when there is a problem, because the problems happen, that everyone just swarms that person and offers assistance and helps them with controlling their breathing and, and getting things under control and slowing down and thinking through problems and resolving things or thumbing the dive, making those decisions together, which is super, super cool. Um, F I don't know about that. Um, let's see. F A said, well, I wouldn't be buying both, but I'm working on convincing my buddy to get one as well. Hence saying I need to get two. Huh. Well, okay. Um, what, so what I, I know that this is not the dive talk team. This is me scuba girls international scuba girls of Georgia. What questions do you guys have for me? Do you have any? Or are we just hanging out on a Friday? Which is absolutely fine by me because I, this has like been the best experience ever. And I'm so glad you guys are here. And you've liked, you've liked the live. Share it. Tell your friends. Help me grow. Help me grow. Well, that's perfect then, F.A. Yeah, I agree. Um, I am all about telling everybody who will stand still long enough about diving. Um, I'm, I just love sharing all the things about diving. We need a social responsibility project to get more young girls diving. Um, that's, that's a parent thing, right? When, when you have parents that come in the shop or you ha are part of a, an organization that maybe teaches swimming, um, talking about scuba, being able to talk about scuba. Um, but now, F.A., you've got me thinking, so now I'm going to figure something out about that. Heidi said, might be a dumb question. What's React Right? I've heard rescue class, but what's the difference? So React Right is actually your um, CPR class, right? So that's um, all of your chest compressions. It's thinking about what type of in-water, on-water injuries that a person might have, um, or even um, on-land injuries that a person might have, and, and being able to provide 
some sort of assistance or aid until um, the professionals arrive or more skilled um, emergency services are there to assist. So one of the things, if I don't know that you guys would even be able to do this, but I'm assuming at some point, Dive Talk Scuba, when they start doing their stress and rescue, there will be videos about it, A, and B, you're going to see the shenanigans that Woody gets up to during rescue class. Um, if there is anyone here besides myself or um, I believe the Dive Talk team um, who have been through a rescue class with Woody, the shenanigans are legendary. They're, I mean, they're absolutely legendary. Um, fun, great learning, but legendary. I mean, he, he seriously goes all out where he's doing like prosthetic pieces to try to simulate injuries. Um, um, I think one year they did Chelsea's eye had popped out and literally trying to like cup the eye. I mean, I mean, just legendary and you're, you're reacting to them in real time. So I had assisted with their stress and less rescue last year, I believe at, um, Woody's Lake house and me and my clumsiness in the dark, not understanding where his fire pit was. I tripped, <laughs> I tripped, I tripped and banged the shit out of my shin and everybody thought it was a simulation. So everybody's just ran over to try to help me. And I'm like, no guys, this was not a real scenario. This was me tripping and falling on my face like an idiot. Um, I have a funny story from my first rescue class as an instructor helper. I would love to hear that. Do you want to share? Or are you going to save that for a video? <laughs> Is there a way? Oh, there's probably not. I don't know enough about this yet. Um, I don't think there's a way to have you join a live stream like there is on um, Instagram's live stream. I don't believe. Otherwise, I'd just throw you up here with me. I'm sure he, he's typing by now. Um, FA says, what about getting people to donate gear that they're no longer using and getting them serviced and giving them out to young female divers? You know, that's not a terrible idea. I will, we should talk about some of the ideas that you have because I have some too. Um, so I was really looking forward to being an instructor because I had this elaborate emergency plan. My plan was to dive from the top of the dock and disappear. Oh my God. So the, the SAG crew jumped off Woody's top um, dock the entire weekend, but that would have been a great one. So I'm, I'm right. I'm hearing, I would like to hear the, more, the rest of the story. So keep typing. Um, anybody have any questions for me while we're waiting for more of the story? So I stashed my BCD under the dock, made sure everyone was watching, jumped head first from the top of the deck, swimmed underwater to under the dock and started breathing from my BC. That's freaking brilliant. I assume that people would be concerned after like 10 minutes, I came out and everyone was gone to eat lunch. I was like, oh, wow. Well, oh, my God. <laughs> how did how did anyone else who was there not point that out? I mean, where was Woody? Because that's just. That's bananas. How long did it take for your spirit to come in? Um, my spirit came in. So the gentleman that I purchased it from used to work for KISS. Um, his name is Tony. And this particular unit that I purchased, I purchased used. It's got about 60 hours on it. And um, so because it had already been meticulously kept uh, by someone who used to work for KISS, uh, we purchased it from him. He was in, I think, Grand Cayman or something to that effect. Um, and recently locate, relocated to Florida. 
Um, so he shipped it a couple days ago and Woody had it as of yesterday. I, Woody wanted to, um, come me to come over today, but I'm, I'm, I'm contagious. It's not been five days yet. Woody told them not to worry. And the pizza was getting cold. That's just mean. Such a great buddy. Oh my God. Just left you there. Ah, that's just rude. No, that's bananas. That's bananas. Um, Hey man, cold pizza is a tragedy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he, he took one of those black and yellow totes, threw everything in there, packaged it really well. Um, zip tied it, FedExed it from Florida. I think two days ago, what he had it as of yesterday, um, shipped my O2 cylinder separately. So they would be ready to go. They are not brand new cylinders, but they've been re brand new hydro. Um, and, uh, and all that good stuff. So he, he had filled them, had to drain them. Oh, well, we'll get them filled again. Um, I spoke to Woody about it afterwards. And I was like, dude, if that was a real, you would be looking at my corpse right now. And he was like, but it was lunch break. <laughs> Cause Woody, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't die at the convenient time for you. <laughs> Thanks Woody. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> See, Heidi, I, I think between myself and, and Gus, we, we have some interesting stories about Woody. Um, amazing, amazing. I'm sure you guys know just from watching videos and meeting him at the meetup. Incredible human being. Very selfless. Very passionate. How Very, very eccentric. He's super cool, though. Um, he, he is quite, quite the personality. I absolutely love Woody. Uh, and I trust him with my life which is why I'm training with him. Um, let's see what else is going on. So back to SGI, enough dive talk. Thank you, F.A., you're so sweet. Um, Scuba Girls of Georgia, just another passion of mine. Um, that was the first group I started. Scuba Girls International came out of that love. So funny enough, I'm going to tell a, an awful story about myself. Um, couple, couple, I'm going to say maybe the first year after we started diving as a family. So I have two children. Um, my oldest son, Nate went diving with us that year. My youngest son is still not into diving. He's just not ready for it. He's kind of shy and timid, um, and, uh, out of his comfort zone. He just doesn't want to do that. So we'll continue to try to introduce him. But, um, like the very first year after we got Nate certified, we went diving down in the Keys with the dive shop and um, went on a night dive. And uh, it was the Thanksgiving weekend, so we had four days. And um, the very first night dive, I think I want to say it may have been Friday night or Saturday night when we did the night dive. We got out there. We were the only boat there when we arrived and went down. So, of course, I just, you know, didn't think about it. There would be another boat by the time we came back up. So... We um, were having issues. Both of us brand new, my, my husband and I, both of us at the time were brand new to the Eon core and the pairing between his pot and mine. Didn't even think about it. Okay. That's gonna, not going to be an issue. It's going to pair to my, mine's going to pair to my pot. His will pair to his. We're probably 60 feet down. Um, maybe no, uh, probably 45 feet down. Cause that the night dives are usually much shallower than that, but it was, it was 40, probably about 40, 45 feet down. And my um, Eon core and his Eon core were reading the exact same PSI. Now I a scuba girls, Turkey. Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Um, we can make that a thing. Absolutely. Um, so we were um, reading the same PSI. Now I have been accused of having gills. Um, if anyone has ever died, with me, you will know that I come out of the water with more air than probably just about everybody else. I don't hold my breath, but as a singer, I have a large lung capacity, lung control, um, breathing control. I don't know, however you want to define that. Um, but I typically come out of the water with more air than most people. So when his tank pressure was reading the same as, as mine, I, I knew that it wasn't accurate. And I'm like, you've got a problem with your computer. It's time to call the dive. So we get up there 
we get up to the surface, didn't even think about that there would be another boat, didn't bother looking at the, the lights on the ladder when you're coming up from a dive. Typically your boat, when you're coming up from a night dive, will have colored lights. They're either gonna be white, and if there's another boat, they're probably blue, especially if they're from, further, they're from the same dive operator, they're going to have different colored lights. We didn't know that, because when we went down, there wasn't a second boat out there. And I didn't even bother thinking, oh, what color are the lights on our boat's uh, ladder? Nope, didn't think about that. Um, so we come up and Gavin, who was the captain of the boat that we came up on, uh, Gavin is no longer there. I gave him a wrath of shit, but um, an amazing story. If, if you ever want to know about that, that's a story for another time. But he was a Rainbow Reef boat captain. Um, we get up. He's like, hey, guys, what's going on? David said, my computer's having an issue. Gavin goes, get on the boat. So what do we do? We get up and get on the boat. Long story short, um, we get on the boat and I meet one of these girls. Her name is, um, I'm having COVID fog, Stella. Her name was Stella. She is the founder of Scuba Girls of Florida. So Scuba Girls of Florida, Florida being a, a super saturated dive state, her group for her state has a thousand plus people. My group for Georgia has 400 plus people. Um, in, in about two years, we've grown to over 400 women. Um, but I met her there and I started Scuba Girls of Georgia shortly after. And then uh, Scuba Girls International became a thing. Scuba Girls International became a thing because there are other female centric groups um, that are out there that are international that also coordinate travel. Um, that I just didn't have positive experiences with. They were, I mean, every post, somebody was getting torn down. I'm not okay with that. I don't need negativity. I don't need you to tear me down. I don't need you to tear somebody else down. If someone's asking, if someone's asking a more junior question because they're early on in their dive career, treat them like a student. Don't treat them like an idiot. There's, there's no call for that. So that was, that was the whole purpose of, of starting Scuba Girls International was because this other group of girls um, do your own research and form your own opinions. Um, I just did not have a positive experience. Do I think they might be trying to change that? Maybe, but I still see a lot of tear down happening there, which I'm not cool with. Uh, let's see. Other commentary. I think I'm going to buy a new one and try to get a wetsuit that fits so I don't freeze in cold winter waters. I just bought a seven mil. Holy Toledo, man, that's a process. Um, let's get more girls in the water. We're working on it. I promise you. Scuba girls is, are my passion too. I bet they are, F.A. Uh, let's see. Sorry. This isn't the group. No, that's a different thread, sir. That go find the other thread, sir. <laughs> My wife is in open water training right now. Finished theory. She'll take the written exam this weekend and diving in July. That's outstanding. FA, where do you guys go to do the open water checkout dives? I know some people don't want to call them checkout dives. They'll call them certification dives. But where are you guys going to do the open water portion? Heidi, do you come up on the wrong boat? How did you come up? I did. I came up on the wrong boat. It was embarrassing. Oh, and the worst part of that story is at the time, <coughs> my son was on the right boat because he had he had went with another group to help them do um, some skills for a, a specialty. And um, it wasn't night diving. It may have been um, search and recovery. Um, so he was helping out with them and he went up on a different boat. So I'm, I'm literally watching our boat leave with my child on it. I'm freaking the out and, and just streaming tears, feeling like a failure as a parent because I got up on the wrong boat. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> um, let's see. F.A. It's so great. Your wife is starting to dive. I think. Oh, no, you didn't. Seven millimeter aqua lungs. Suckas. <laughs> yes, that is what I got. Um, do you know where that is? I do not. I don't even know how to pronounce it correctly, FA. The aqua lung I got in Florida, the one Woody has, it's amazing. Amazing. Uh, two minutes to put on. Um, I, up to this point in my life, have not been small enough to fit into an aqua lung. Some of the um, 
wetsuit producers are not kind to bigger bodies, um, which is also something that I'm passionate about solving and will take on at some point. Almost bought a five millimeter of the same wetsuit. My five millimeter is an Akona. Um, I'm not a bad mommy. I felt like a terrible failure. I really did. Um, did your son know you were okay? At the time, I don't know. Um, I want to say I believe that the others told him I would be fine. Um, our boat did not leave until later because our boat was already done. The boat that I got on the wrong boat where I met Stella and Gavin was the captain. Um, we left after they did. So by the time that we got there, our friends and my son had met us at the dock and I'm in tears trying to control myself and my emotions. And, um, we all went to dinner and had drinks afterwards and everything was fine. Um, but still that internal panic when you're like, Oh shit, I hope my dive community takes care of my kid because I'm on a, I'm on the wrong boat, <laughs> you know, great parenting. Um, what else guys? We have been at this for an hour. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you for hanging out with me on a Friday. <coughs> Blondie. That's not my, no this is not my normal hair color if you're referring to me, Heidi. This, this is stripped and faded. I was blue and purple before it happened. And prior to that, I was purple. Prior to that, I was red. I'm mostly red. I had a blonde moment. Yeah. Well, you know, that kind of thing happens. <laughs> um, I am debating going back to red. We'll see what happens. I dive the Maris Graph Flex 7 millimeter in North Florida Caves and love it. It goes up to 3XL. Um, they are also not necessarily kind to plus size bodies in my experience. Um, if you look at the female line, I could go grab something in the male line and it fit, but to attempt to buy something in their female line, um, I might fit now, but prior I would not have. And right now I'm probably at the top of their line if I can fit it stripped and faded. Yes, exactly. If you look, you can still see some of the blue and some like the rose gold underneath is it, this was purple. Um, but we'll see. The female line goes up to 16. Not sure what that is. Well, I, the 16 would probably be too big on me now. Um, but that's after losing a hundred pounds. I was a big girl. I was a fabulous big girl, but I was still a big girl. It's outrageous that a 3XL isn't a 3XL. Exactly. Thank you, Jeffrey. I want to get with you about my wetsuit. We can talk about that too, darling. It feels like I'm choking. So is your wetsuit brand new? Utilize the whiteboard behind you. What do you want me to put on the whiteboard, F.A.? I use this for work all the time. Draw some dive plans. Where are we diving? <laughs> it's backwards. I got skills. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, brand new and back zip. So let's talk about why you're having a wet wetsuit squeeze issue. So it's brand new. When you take it down to depth a number of times, it'll start to compress and then it'll relax. But you're you want it to fit snug because it'll let in the thin water, a thin layer of water versus a lot of water just continuously flushing if your suit's too big. Um, and, and you're not going to warm up that way. It's going to be, you're going to be too cold. Um, but it will compress. It will get more comfortable over use, but you got to take it down to depth. So we need to get you past 40 feet for a couple of dives and do things like pulling on the neck a little bit, just to give you a little bit more space. I promise it'll, it'll work out. 
I wish Heidi had gotten a front zip too. F.A. Wrong group. <laughs> All right, Christy's in here speaking a different language. I want the Hollis, the hood front zip and pockets. Worried three four quarter will not be in a stretch, but seven mil would be way too hot for me. I have to go sit in the corner. Um, Seven mil is going to save your ass if you're in cold water. I know that there's some of us who have um, a lot of additional insulation, which is nice. But if you are in 72 degrees for a prolonged period of time, I promise you your core is going to get cold. I now put it backwards, but it's backwards. Backwards. Oh, ha, derp. <coughs> I used to be able to do things like write my name backwards in cursive. That didn't work anymore. <laughs> there. <laughs> I used to dive three millimeter brugato in Devil's Den. I always thought that was I mean, it would be too hot, but when you do a two plus hour dive, it really pays off to have a seven millimeter. I am hoping that V seven mil will save my ass coming up in training. <sighs> Can you mute F? No, I'm not going to mute FA, Heidi. First, determine biggest obstacles for women getting into diving. Um, I will personally share my own experience around that, F.A. I think that the biggest obstacles around um, women getting into diving is just being met with resistance sometimes, um, not being taken seriously, um, female body shapes not being taken into account, anxiety or nervousness not being taken into account. Um, I think guys in general in the scuba community can be a little tough. Um, I mean, just go look at some of the Facebook groups that are out there and how many people um, immediately go to guns or immediately get defensive or immediately start tearing people down. I would love to be able to change, be a part of the change that I want to see in the dive community and make it more supportive in general across the board. That's just my opinion. If I want to do shallow reef dives, why not wear two tanks so I could stay down longer? That's completely different training, Heidi. Doubles is a whole separate thing, but it is additional training. Um, yeah, I still think it would kill me growing up near springs and spending hours swimming in it. But semi-dry is also on the table. So much money to spend so little time. You know, it's funny you say that, Jeffrey, because I used to just get to a point where I'm like, I'm just going to sign over my paycheck to the dive shop because, damn, I spend a lot of money. Um, hell yes, more supportive. No macho crap. You know, there is just as much toxic femininity as there is toxic masculinity. I can't even speak. Toxic masculinity in diving. Um, you can't necessarily nail that down to one gender by any stretch of the imagination. That change has to come from everybody. But again, just my opinion. Your mileage may vary. <coughs> so what do you think, guys? you think I should do this again sometime? I mean, I'm not the dive talk duo by any stretch, but I could because I'm here by myself. But girl, take some vitamin C and get some rest. I have taken vitamin C all day today. Do you ever dry dive dry suit? So, Christy, I have not done the dry suit specialty yet. I was not smart like Liz and uh, run to do my dry suit specialty before moving into CTCR. Um, the other gentleman who may potentially join us for training has already done his dry suit certification as well. However, I wasn't smart enough, but that's next. Um, I know this is not the dive talk show, but we are trying to solve that issue at least in the OS for people who can't afford expensive gear. Um, I think that that's amazing. Um, don't tell anyone though. It's a work in progress. We won't tell anyone. <clears throat> um, 
that indeed is amazing. So <clears throat> I know that you guys are <clears throat> have found me via Dive Talk. When you go to their YouTube page, all of their fun links are at the top right. I'm working on mine. Mine will be different. Mine will have, um, I'll have my own affiliate program. I am not going to judge you if because you first found me through Dive Talk, if you went and did their affiliate programs or got discounts through their, their stuff. I don't care wherever you get it, get your discounts because that means you're saving money. You're saving money with good people um, who care about their fans, their divers, their community. Um, so I don't care how you do it. Just do it. Oh, we need to set up some workshops to brainstorm. I would love that, F.A. We can put together a little project team. Y'all have been so amazing. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. Discord chat. I don't Discord. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. You can keep that. <laughs> I'm sure she did. I'm sure she did. Uh, my mom was watching. Is she still watching? Mom, are you still here? Uh-oh. <laughs> She's cool. No, F.A., you're fine. <laughs> she may not even be here still. You're so cute. Hi, mom. I don't know that she's actually still here. She may not be. My mom is not the most technical person. Effie, there's nothing that you could say that would offend my mom. My mom is a, a, a uber cool chick. And I don't, I don't think she's still here. Oh, she is. <laughs> She's actually hitting me up in Facebook to tell me that she is still here, but she's here. Hi, mom. I love you. That's too funny. <laughs> mom, everyone is saying hi. <clears throat> it's obviously time for me to take more meds. Hello, hot mama. <laughs> I'm going to tell her you said that. Oh, wait, I just did. <laughs> When I see my mom again, I'll, I will teach her how to um, participate in the open chat. Mother, I'd like to dive with. Well, Effie, you're going to have a hard time with that. My mom does not swim, so I'm not going to get her diving. That's just not going to be a thing. Um, do I think that she would joy, enjoy the underwater world? Yes, I have made her friends with a bunch of dive friends so she could see everyone's pictures from dive trips, but you are not going to get my mom in the water as a diver, but I'm a mom, so you can dive with me. <laughs> C, C, C. Um, Heidi, are you saying yes by the letter C or are you filling out a Scantron? Because I'm not certain. Because if you're trying to say yes in Spanish, it's not spelled that way, love. What the hell? Guess what, Heidi? It's time to make you a um, a mod. Oh, how do you do that? Remove. Oh, hell.
There we go. Can I kick them out? How do I kick them out? Hide user on this channel. All right. Boom. That's FA's fault for sure. <laughs> ah, that's my other account, don't worry. There we go. Bye, Mom. Mwah, 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 mwah. There we go. So at least we now have one moderator. I've just promoted Heidi. So hopefully uh, that will uh, keep that shit from happening again. Holy cow, that was a nightmare. So what's everybody doing this weekend before we jump off of here? That's right. Heidi has Heidi has powers now. <laughs> Kids have tennis. Nice, nice. Studying for EMT. I am certain you will knock that out of the park, Christy. Mrs. F.A. has her open water written exam. Super easy. You have driving duties. My usual potato nest wall. Since I am still in the five-day window of contagion, I am going anywhere. Anybody else doing diving this weekend? Lots of time to make new SGI videos. So interesting. Um, at least now that I've gone live, I can see what my quality is like. It's not the greatest. Um, my sound may not be the greatest. So I'm going to have to invest in some equipment. Um, we'll see. I, I need to. I need to do some things. Um, I don't want to be the same thing as dive talk though, FA, you know, filming reactions is great, but people do that already. Um, I know that people watch them. So maybe I might do some here and there. Um, but, um, I do my sure mics are for singing though. Um, and I have a mixer, uh, but it's all it. So what I'll show, let me show, let me show, let me show. That's my band room. That's my drum set. So they're in there are sure mics and a, a, a sound system and a great mixing board, but it is not going to be effective for what we're doing here. Heidi, I appreciate that you think the sound and the quality are good for the live stream, but I don't know what it's going to be like for videos. So I will need to work that out. F.A. says, I'm not going to do the same thing as dive talk for sure when filming since I don't have the experience to support it. People would be like, who are you to say these things? Now, I, I could absolutely do um, reactions to um, what I would be comfortable with. They're probably going to be open circuit videos, but I feel like that's been done. Um, I'm not going to be the next um, D Almighty because uh, I'm not going out there diving for treasure. Um, you know, some of the channels that I follow are that are other divers. Um, I feel like they've already done that. So I think the the weakness and the thing that's missing out there is women centric. But um, I am open to ideas if you have them. I'm getting private messages from the moderator threatening to kick me out of chat. <laughs> Heidi is not doing that. F.A. She loves you. Don't be ridiculous, dude. The one thing that I did not bring downstairs for my unboxing is my cart. So sometimes in, in the dive locations in cave country, you have to walk and quite a bit and carry a lot of gear and tanks. 
So I purchased a cart to get me from A to B, especially for places like Buford. And it's purple. So I'm excited. You can talk about how women are still used as objects to market products. Seriously, go look at some of the, the dive um, producers like your wetsuits, um, your regulators. You're still seeing very thin women, unrealistic women being used for marketing. Absolutely. And do women still have issues with sexism and, and um, being supported in, in diving? Absolutely. It is still an issue. Um, I had someone talk to me not too long ago about being approached by their instructor, um, to have sex with them. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. Um, I follow some dive hashtags on Instagram and it's all women in thin, thin bikinis. Absolutely. Cause it's still a thing. They still think that sex sells, which it does. But we should be able to change that culture and it still be representative of everybody who should be able to dive. Yep, it does. It does happen a lot. Did you get a hard case from Deep Six? I did not get the hard case from Deep Six because they were out. They had that many. I think between Dive Talk and some other channels, Deep Six is finally getting the recognition that they deserve and people are buying their stuff up like, like hotcakes, which is great for them. It's absolutely great for them. Um, I was eyeing their, their dry suits a couple days ago. So they're, they have become a wetsuit producer on my list of companies to do research for. I've been approached by my dive instructors in regards to sex, mainly them telling me to stop talking about it. Of course, F.A. Don't ever stop being you, like Heidi said. Awesome. You guys have been absolutely amazing. I can't thank you enough for joining me on my first live. Thank you for coming to play with me. I'm trying very hard not to sound terrible. This has been fun. Thank you. They don't have wetsuits at the moment. They do have dry suits. Now they do have wetsuits there that they're talking about, but they don't have any inventory. So I think that they are working on their line of wetsuits. They're just not there yet. Either that or they're hundred percent custom. So they don't have that. They're not, they're not ready to face that potential um, supply issue, if that makes sense. It was fun seeing you next to you next time. Thanks, Christy. I appreciate you coming. I wish I didn't get crazy sexual advances either. Well, Jeffrey, that's a hard problem to have. Yeah, I want to see what they come up with too. Yeah, it'll be, I've, I've seen some people talk about them, but I have no idea what they look like. I've not seen pictures. <laughs> he wasn't going to keep them to himself. Now, when we are done here, I am going to leave this posted on the um, Scuba Girls International YouTube channel. So it will be there for replay if there's anything else that you guys want to see or, or um, relive your glorious comments in, in this chat. Um, but... If you haven't noticed, about an hour ago, Argonauts, um, there is a new Dive Talk video out there waiting to be watched. And it looks like it's going to be a good one. This was very fun. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Heidi. I love you. Hide the chats. No, you don't need to hide the chats. They're there for a reason. This is fun. Last opportunity, comments, questions, concerns. <laughs> Jeff.
I'm not hiding the chats. Tori, you finally made it. I love you too. I was hoping Rebecca would make it, but I'm sure she's busy. This is the new Terry Tori. <laughs> so FA Tori is from my dive shop. She is one of my favorite humans out of the dive shop. Sorry, I'm late. Missed the love the announcement. I I'm I, you, there will be plenty of others. I'm just glad you showed up. I'll update you. Squeezing into the three XL suit tomorrow. Awesome, awesome. Where, wait, there was a love announcement. No, FA, it wasn't a love announcement. It was just an announcement. It, but I don't, are we friends on Facebook? Because you would have seen it if you if you were connected with me on Facebook. Plus, it's in the Scuba Girls International Facebook group. There are two, by the way. There are currently two groups in Facebook for Scuba Girls International. If you put it in the um, URL, let me just give you what they are. Um, it is facebook.com backslash groups backslash or is it forward slash? I never get them right. Um, Scuba Girls International 2. That's the public one. The private one does not have the two at the end, but they are um, the private one is for women only because I need that safe space for women to be able to talk about women centric things. So that particular space is women only. But the public one, which is Scuba Girls International 2, um, is for anyone who wants to join men supporters, FA that includes you. Um, Jeffrey, I think you're already in there. FA, I don't know if you are. Um, I saw the live announcement. That's how you identify as a woman. Very cute FA not happening. <laughs> FA identifies as a goofball. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tori, since you are joining late, any comments, questions, concerns, anything? I mean, we're on the, at least on the same level. If, if not, you are far um, more of a, a pro, at least you've been a pro longer than I have. Yes, F.A., Tori is also a professional. She's an open water instructor. Yes, you do get good vibes from Tori. Tori's awesome. We need more female instructors. That's why I got involved. That's why I did it, because there needs to be more. None that I can think of. This was about the brand you bought from, right? Yes. So I unboxed my um, bailout regs from Deep Six for my um, rebreather um, for my bailout tanks. So while orange is not my favorite color, um, it's what they had. So that's what I got. Um, there were some circumstances where they had black, um, but they did not have the ones that I needed in black. So I couldn't go black. So I went orange. Although I'm learning, I look very good in orange. So it may become a color I am into. No swivel joint. Actually, it swivels. Let me move some stuff. It is a swivel joint. It moves. Because <coughs> the um, package that I got was the side mount. And because the side mounts need to swivel, um, they swivel. Gus did not pull strings, so they only had orange. It was what I ordered on the website, and that was all they had available. I want to find an instructor like my local people seem off. Jeffrey, I know that we had talked about that before. Um, I know that Dive Talk Scuba will be increasing their instruction in Florida at some point, um, but I also am hopeful that they will be increasing their instruction here in Georgia as well. You know, the second stage of swivel joint. Oh, like on, um, no, no, sir. 
No, sir. I do not have that. Four hours drive is not bad. I mean, if, if, if you go south or north, you know, if you go down to Ocean Treasures or you come out to Atlanta, I'm, I'm certain that you will get quality instruction. I know that you're very picky. We could even talk, we could even do a conversation about how to pick an instructor. Yeah, the shorter one is the Octo FA. Heidi, you're in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. That's why the grocery store is four hours. Do you have an alien on your arm? No, it's an elephant. You didn't see it during the meetup. I mean, unless you consider elephants aliens. And then my flower of life tattoo. It's funny that that whole thread on the dive talk group where they're talking about dive tattoos. I also have a dive tattoo as my mermaid and my diver down flag with my, with my turtle. Um, I try to stay away from Alabama. Yeah, me too. Um, my next dive tattoo is going to be an octopus. I wasn't checking out people during the meetup. F.A., we're going to have to have conversations about you not telling the truth. <clears throat> Uh-huh. Yeah, I see that. Uh, Got to read the rebreather book and choose between Woody and Doc. Now, let's talk about that, okay? Um, Dr. Doug Ebersol has been um, in the KISS family for a long time. And I do believe, Gus, if you're still here, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, was Doug a part of his certification? Or was that um, Mike or maybe even Ed? I don't remember. Because COVID brain fog is a real thing. Gus may not even be here anymore. Because we've only been here an hour and a half. Either way, um, Jeffrey, I will tell you that you cannot go wrong with either of them. Um, I don't know... Well, hello, Kurdistan. I am. I am not going to attempt to um, butcher city names or country names by any stretch of the imagination. I am just glad you're here, Helen. Thank you for joining. Um, Jeffrey, you could be absolutely right. I just don't remember off the top of my head. And if Gus is no longer here to validate that, I just I don't remember. But you cannot go wrong with either Doug or with Woody, to be honest with you. They're both incredibly knowledgeable. And, and if you've ever watched, I mean, I mean, you saw them at the meetup. Both are incredible divers. Why would you not want to learn from them? <coughs> Helen, I know that you missed the unboxing. Um, and uh, so we've been just kind of hanging out for the last 30 minutes or so, just kind of talking and chatting, you're more than welcome to ask any questions. If you have any questions about open circuit diving or if you're a diver or a non-diver, either way, uh, it doesn't matter. We're just glad you're here. Or, I'm gonna say it wrong, so please forgive me. Um, Erbil Kurdistan in Iraq, you're Kurdish. I think that it, that is amazing. Um, welcome, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for the wonderful live, Terry. Yes, thank you, F.A., for being here. Um, thanks for the head up stuff so I could. Hey, look, this was a last minute decision. I literally pulled the trigger last minute and was like, ta-da. So here we are. But yes, I will try to be more planful. Um, I will probably try to do it during the week instead of on a Friday. Um, potentially like a t no FA. No, I'm not trying to scare the loving bejesus out of people by showing up here with no makeup. Okay. Um, but yes, I know it is the, it is a late hour 
where, where you are. Uh, what time is it where you are, Efe? You've got to be past midnight by now. 1 a.m. Yeah, you're you're in you're in Turkey, Turkey. <clears throat> oh, you're in Istanbul. Everybody give a warm welcome to Helen for joining us from out of the country also. Let her feel a little welcome for, for jumping on the live at the last minute. I certainly appreciate that. Diving near my dad next weekend, he says he will drive over to see me. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Helen, are you a diver? Thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. I'm going to give her an opportunity to ask any questions if she wants to. Um, and then if, if she doesn't have to, when is your course? My course is so um, technically I'm off to the grocery store. Thank you, Heidi. Absolutely love you. Thank you for being here. Um, FA, my course with Woody is technically July, June, June 29th or 30th. No, it's Thursday, June 30th through July 4th. But we are meeting um, June 27th to um, put together my rebreather for the first time. And on the 28th, we're going to do some pool jumps here locally. So I can, I know it's close, like holy cow, and I'm not even done the materials. So I need to finish that too. Um, but yeah, Gonna come to Central Florida for my birthday. Jeffrey, when is your birthday? The funny thing is, is my CCR certification happens before my instructor evaluation. So I'll actually be CCR certified before I'm an open water instructor. July 3rd, I believe we are do I still have that list? I do have that list. Let me just tell you. Where did I write it all down? Because I just recently wrote it all down. Because my desk is a mess. Um, da, da, da. Where did I write it all down? That's my partial pressure of oxygen calculations. I know I wrote it down. Oh, maybe I didn't. So we're, I think we're, we're not at Buford that day. I think July 3rd, we are maybe at Blue Grotto. Um, let me, here we go. I'll tell you, give me 30 seconds. I'll tell you exactly where we'll be. Nope, I lied. We'll be at Paradise Springs or Buford on your birthday. So we'll be at Paradise Springs or Buford on your birthday. Uh, do, do I need to sing that, F.A.? I mean, if you if you have the time, Jeffrey, to bust out the material between now and then, do it. But you'd have to have a, a, a unit. And I don't think um, Gus is still here to tell you if there's anything else that's out there that might be for sale short and fast. Oh, he already does? Oh, well then, dude, do it. 
you already have a unit, Jeffrey, get on it. Hello. Are you telling me what my, my plan is for training that day? I mean, ah, <laughs> oh my goodness. Jeffrey has a unit. He, 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 yes, he does. Maybe it'll hit home now. I just think he, he should, he should jump on it if that's what he wants to do. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm on the same page, Christy. I'm being funny. I'm in the wrong thread. In other words, Okay, let me do this for Helen, H-E-L-I-N, just because she too is international. And that's backwards and in cursive. <laughs> yep. Yep. I agree, F.A. All right, guys, I certainly appreciate y'all hanging out with me <laughs> and, and listening to me ramble for the last hour <clears throat> and 40 minutes. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say it enough. And uh, I will try to give you more notice next time. And uh, hopefully we can hang out again. I'm never going to give you up. Oh, hey, F.A., I just put that in a wedding ceremony. Did I tell you guys that? I did tell you guys that in the thread, didn't I? It went off amazing. Like the whole audience loved it. It was it was crazy. It was awesome. I literally snuck it into the ceremony in several sentences. Um, and it was absolutely I did not expect it to go over as well as it did, but it was awesome. <laughs> All right, before we go, last question. Topics you guys would like to see me cover, people you would like to see me interview, um, things that you would like me to cover in a live. Drop it, drop it like it's hot. I then we'll call it. As always, I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the subscribes. Share with your people. I cannot grow without you. Um, when you're watching the material that I put out, when you are liking the videos, when you comment on the videos, um, if you literally just listen in the background, don't watch and just hear everything, that too helps the algorithms and pushes me out to people who might not normally see me, especially as I grow. Um, famous female underwater photographers. I have a few in mind for that particular topic, even people who are less known. Um, I have a gal who I went to high school with. We're going to bring her on the show. Um, and then I have a couple of females, fam famous underwater photographers who are already on my list. I just have to reach out to them. Um, Yes, that is another name, uh, Christine Gosart. I would love to uh, talk to her as well. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I absolutely love you guys. Thank you for jumping on. Um, I will see you next time. Please like, subscribe. Um, if you hit the bell icon, you'll know when I go live the next time. I will still try to give you warning. Mel Clark, absolutely. Holy cow, are you kidding? Jill Heinworth would also be very cool. Heinerth, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to make a list based on uh, what all y'all have here. All right, y'all. 
I love you dearly. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know when I put stuff out there in the world. Helen, it was lovely to meet you too. Um, I would hope that if we are on uh, a live the next time that we do this, if the time works for you, we'd love to have you back. Um, we would love to, to just have you here and hang out. Awesome, guys. I hope you have a great night and a wonderful weekend. Hopefully this was a fun start to your weekend. Um, take care of yourself. See you next time. Mwah.